In this video, we'll look at a solution to deliver a corporate YouTube experience in SharePoint 2013. Our solution is going to be delivered using the new Apps for SharePoint model and Azure Media Services. So the app model is going to provide us a lot of flexibility so that we could run our solution both in an on-premise farm or in Office 365. Now you might be wondering, why do we even need a solution for this? Doesn't SharePoint provide native video capabilities? Well, sure it does, but there's also a number of key limitations to those capabilities if we're going to allow anyone in the organization to contribute videos. So the first limitation is that when I upload a video to SharePoint, it's going to get stuck in the same content database as all my other files for that site. So since videos tend to be larger in size, I'm going to grow my content database at a much faster rate than I normally would. I'm also going to you know, possibly grow that to the point where I reach the recommended capacity for a content database, which is about 200 gigabytes. Speaking of uploads, another limitation is upload sizes in SharePoint have a hard limit of 2 gigabytes. So if I had a media file that was larger than 2 gigabytes, I absolutely could not use SharePoint to host that video. A few other limitations are the fact that when I upload a video to SharePoint, SharePoint isn't going to transcode that video to anything. It's basically whatever video format and quality that I upload, that's what users are going to consume. So this does a couple of things. One is we might end up with all kinds of different video formats uploaded. We might have MOVs, AVIs, MP4s. Well, some of those might not be supported by different browsers that we want to view it in. And so ideally we would want to accept any of those file formats but be able to transcode it into a common format that we know will run on on all different machines and maybe be able to adjust qualities for that. Another limitation in the fact that we're not encoding when we upload to SharePoint is the fact that I'm not going to be able to do a really nice fast forward in a video. So SharePoint provides what we call a progressive download of the video. And what that means is if I had an hour long video and all I cared about was the very last minute of the video, I would have to download the entire video to get to that last minute. Whereas if I were to re-encode it for something like smooth streaming, I could jump to anywhere in the video and I wouldn't have to download the whole thing. I could just jump directly to those places in the video. So let's take a look at our solution and how we're going to address those limitations. Azure is going to be a, com a key component in addressing some of those limitations. So we're going to be able to use Azure Storage, Blob Storage, to store our media. We're going to use Azure Media Services to encode our media. So regardless of what a user contributes, we're going to convert it to a common format. And then we're going to be able to stream that from Azure so that users could fast forward, they could you know, view it on any sort of device, and we're not going to be limited to the file size limitations of SharePoint. Before I jump into the solution, I first want to recognize the out-of-the-box user experience of contributing videos inside of SharePoint 2013. We're going to want to emulate that experience as close as possible so that it's easy for users to understand how to use our app. So I'm going to go over here to a SharePoint site, and the normal way I would contribute a video is by going to an asset library. So I have one here. Here's my asset library. And for me to add a video, I would go up to Files and say New Video. And then that would walk me through my different options for contributing video. So our app is going to copy this as close as we can. What we're going to do is add a new button to the ribbon here that will allow us to upload media into our app for processing. So let's go ahead and deploy our app and take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio here. And I'm going to go ahead and start to deploy. Now, actually, before I deploy, one of the things that's going to happen as part of the app install is we're going to actually call out to a remote event. So I have a, an actually a remote event receiver here that all this is going to do is, is see who the current user is, who the user is that's installing the app. And it's going to store that in our database as the primary administrator of the app. We can change that later, but we need to at least seed our list of administrators with that current user who's doing the install. All right, so let's go ahead and press F5, and we'll start our app. 
It was important to point out that remote event receiver because you're gonna see it almost right off the bat. Um, when I try to go in and use the app, it's gonna warn me that we don't have all the settings configured for the app and that I should contact the app administrator and it'll list my name. And again, the way it knows my name is because we captured that during the install. So here it's asking me to trust the app. I'll go ahead and say trust. And then let me jump back over to our asset library and I'm gonna refresh the page here and let's see if our ribbon button is showing up. So go to the ribbon and sure enough, there's our upload to media services ribbon button. Now at this point, the app doesn't have all the information it needs. So if I were to click on this ribbon button, what you'll see is I'll get a little message that says the app hasn't been configured. Please contact the app administrator and then you can see that it has my name here. So let's go ahead and finish configuring the app. What the app needs is some app specific settings that are gonna be specific to the tenant that has this app installed. So what I need to do is provide the app with things like some Azure accounts that we're gonna use for doing the encoding and storage. So I'll go over here and in the side navigation, you can see I have an Azure Media Manager link. And that takes me to the full screen version of our app. The fir first page we'll see here is just a quick page, again, saying that the app hasn't been configured. What we would normally see when we come in here is we would see a list of all the videos that have been sent through the app for processing. This is a great screen because it allows us to identify possible orphans that we've tried to process. Maybe something went wrong and it'll show us the error message. So the way that SharePoint 2013 treats media is it actually puts it in a document set. Microsoft realized that contributing a video is usually more than just a video. At the very least, I'll probably have a thumbnail that goes along with that video. I might also have some supporting documentation like maybe a, a presentation deck or maybe a block of code or something like that that I wanna provide alongside that video. And that's why use, we use the document set. So our app is ultimately gonna create document sets for all the media that gets contributed with a link back over to our video that's hosted inside of Azure. Well, we have the ability of those getting out of sync. I could have document sets without videos and I could have videos without document sets. And that's ultimately what this main screen is, is meant for, is to be able to identify whether or not um, there are orphans. Now, for me to get into the app settings, we're gonna leverage the out of the box menu that's part of the Chrome control. So you can see here I have the little gearbox as part of my Chrome control. And if I click on that, you can see I have a link for contact us and settings. Settings in this case is actually security trim. So a normal user wouldn't see that option, but I happen to be the app administrator and therefore I have that option here shown, displayed to me. So I'll go ahead and click on settings and I'm gonna just quickly populate the settings that I need to actually use the app. So the app leverages both Azure Blob Storage and Azure Media Services. And I need to provide accounts and access keys for both of those. So I happen to have those handy. Um, actually, for those that aren't familiar, um, you can actually find these out on the Azure portal. So here's all my different Azure services. And you can see at the bottom, I have a link to manage keys. And that'll give me my account keys and account names that I would use. I went ahead and copied those ahead of time just for speed sake. And we'll quickly paste these guys in here. So those are my storage accounts. Here's my media services account. A few of the other options that I have in the settings screen is I can add additional administrators and change the encoding format. Now remember, we're gonna allow users to contribute almost any video type, but we want that to get encoded to one specific common video type, or maybe, maybe a couple of different video types, but this gives us the ability to select our encoding, encoding format. I might want to also go ahead and add an additional administrator, and that's what this gives me the ability to do here. I'll go ahead and maybe add Garth as an app administrator, and now I'll click Save. Now the app is, is ready for us to start using. In fact, when we go back to the default page, it won't show any media, but we don't get that error message that says the app hasn't been in, uh, configured. 
you can see we just don't have any videos. So let's go contribute a video. So I'm gonna go back to the site, back to our media library. And now when I go up to the files menu and click on our ribbon button, I should get an upload form that we can now leverage to upload media to. So let's go ahead and contribute a media file. We're using a nice drag and drop upload here just like you see on typical document libraries inside of SharePoint. It's nice using that HTML5 capability wherever we can, so we are. So let me go ahead and grab a media file. I'm gonna pick a, a small media file so that this we're not waiting forever for this to encode because it can take a while. And that's actually one of the reasons why when I submit this form, it's gonna capture what it needs to and then release the thread so that I can basically get nice asynchronous updates and not wait for the page to, to refresh forever. So I'll go ahead and drag and drop this my video in here. When I do that, you can see that it, it, it actually set the media title to the file name. Um, in this case, I could rename it. I'll just call this um, demo video. And now we're ready to submit our vid video to our app. Actually, this is our app. Um, it's, you know, it's the app being displayed within the, the SharePoint dialog. Uh, but what we're ready to do is submit the file off for processing to Azure. So what we'll do is before I click OK here, I want to bring up my media services because we're going to actually watch this as it occurs. So let me go into media services and I'll go to my service. And here in content, what you'll see is I have a couple of media files here already. I have two, but there are a number of new files that are going to show up as soon as I submit this. So we're first going to go and store the raw media file in the format that we submitted it in. Um, then as we start to encode the file, we'll see a new media file and a thumbnail because we're actually going to generate a thumbnail for our video as part of the encoding process. So I'll go move this over to the side here and I'll move my other browser over to the side over here and let's go ahead and click OK and this will start our processing. So you can see it's done uploading to the server. Now we're waiting for it to send to media services. So if you watch media services over here, in just a moment, there it goes, we see our media file popping up. This is the raw media file. It's not the encoded media file. Here in a moment, what you're gonna see is we'll have a couple of new files pop up and that will be, there it goes. Here is our, um, our encoded media file and the thumbnail for the video. Now encoding can take a while. If you wanna actually monitor the encoding, you can click on the job tabs in media services and you should be able to find your encoding project. So you can see here, both the encoding and the thumbnail generation are at 0%, but um, what we'll see here in just a moment is these will actually um, continue to be 100% and it'll allow us to move on. Now again, you can see over in my app, it's showing me nice real-time updates. So we actually have a, a service that our app is hosting that we're able to go off and check status updates of our, our processing. So it looks like encoding is done. Now we're just waiting on the thumbnail generation. I also have the ability of just saying, you know what, just email me when this is done. Um, in fact, we're, we're gonna email the user regardless to let them know that their video is ready and that it's been processed. And we'll see that experience here in just a moment. So it looks like our thumbnail is done generating and we should get a status update here in just a moment that encoding is completed. Um, so look, now it looks like our encoding job is finished. Should take no longer than about 10 seconds. There we go. And the last step is to actually publish this back to SharePoint. So that should happen here just in a moment. And now we are complete. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And you can see that the page refreshed with our demo video. You can see that it generated a thumbnail for our demo, demo video. And if I go inside, actually you can see there it just gave me a, a, an email saying that my, my video is ready for processing and it gives me a link to my video. Again, this email was generated from our app. Um, if I were to go click on this, it's going to take me inside of our video. And you can see we have our video here. In this case, it's just me 
doing silly things in front of a camera. But um, the interesting thing here is that if I were to bring up the developer tools and click on the video, what you'll see is this is actually an iframe out to our app. So let me bring this up here a little bit more. You, here's the iframe, and you can see, in this case, we're in debug mode, so it's localhost, but it's bringing up a player that has our app, uh, uh, basically the player embedded in it, the, the media file embedded inside of here. So that's actually how we're delivering this app. We're, we're able to, um, you know, basically put an embed code for the video in this document set. So this is a, at this point, it's a document set like any other uh, video. I can go add all kinds of related media. Um, I could view this full screen if I wanted to. It's really just like any other video, but in this case, we've sent it through Azure for processing. It's been encoded. Now it's set up for smooth streaming, so I could fast forward through here all I wanted to, and we haven't filled up our content database. If I were to go back to our uh, full screen app, the last thing I'll show you here is that it did keep a, a, a track of that video that we submitted. You can see the status is complete and it gives us a link to the video. Um, had an error occurred, we could see all that detail here. It would show the error message in the comments and we could try to resolve that issue. So hopefully this gives you a glimpse at how we can relieve some of the limitations of out of the box media capabilities of SharePoint 2013 um, using the app model and Azure Media Services.